Yeah, the topic of my speech is uh, possibilities of urban interventions. And I'm an artist and urbanist in Hong Kong. And um, perhaps the term urbanist might be a bit uh, strange to you, but uh, it means someone who is extremely interested in the city, the studies of ur urbanism and uh, city cultures. Um, Indeed, my favorite TED talk is the one by Jay Au, the artist. Perhaps some of you have heard of him. Uh, his TED talk's title was uh, Turning the World Upside Down by Art. But uh, after listening to that talk, I somehow find it difficult for, for us, for the ordinary people who, who don't have that amount of resources to turn the world upside down by art. Instead, today I would like to talk about another person another approach to art that is what I call urban intervention or, or this is a broader, broader approach to, to um, art uh, about, the, uh, about the urban space that is uh, very influential right now worldwide. Um, the, my understanding of uh, urban intervention is actually uh, opposing to uh, or in contrast to those who, who are in power when we think about who has the power to intervene into the city or change or shape our city, we usually think of uh, planners, architects, politicians. They are extremely powerful. But as ordinary people like us, is that we couldn't change the city? I think that the answer, answer is absolutely negative. Um, I draw on the book, Change the World Without Taking Power. Um, it actually describes the term urban intervention very well. Rather than changing the material structure or actually transforming the city's artifacts, we can actually change the way we navigate in the city and we interact with it and the way we approach it. Um, that is the idea of urban intervention. It is the power of the powerless. Uh, I have given this talk about urban intervention for multiple times, but today I will focus on one, one single approach because uh, we don't have much time today. Um, I, I only approach the question by talking about whether we can all be urban explorers in our city. Um, maybe usually when the idea of an expo explorer comes about, we think of a very masculine, heroic, and adventurous uh, image of someone who go to the remotest corners of the world. Um, but today, what I talk about as an explorer is very different. It's not, um, it's not about having a lot of equipment, a, a, a torch, and then go to somewhere that is extremely dangerous. Rather, I would like to talk about the way we navigate the city. Actually, we can explore the most familiar places to us um, by, look, by thinking about the concept of marginality or, or marginal places, interstitial spaces or queer spaces. Actually, we have a very, root, uh, very rigid, fixed and uh, very uh, habitual pattern of walking in the city or going through your everyday life. You, for example, when you come into the campus, you go to where you, your destination directly. Um, by disrupting this pattern and thinking about places that is marginal to you, marginal to your life, spaces that is not routinely approached by you or routinely interact with you, um, you can also be an urban explorer. Uh, the se second concept I would like to talk about is um, the concept of ruined porn. Because when we talk about urban exploration, we usually think of people who visit uh, the ruins, abundant places that is uh, extremely um, mystic, um, mysterious. Um, and so we have a very spectacular imagination about abundant spaces. So time to time, from the internet, we see like these poles, the 33 most beautiful aban abandoned places in the world. But I want to suggest that um, actually to, un to undertake urban exploration doesn't have to be that um, mysterious or you, you don't have to have that amount of knowledge. You, you simply have to figure out the residual or neglected space 
actually all kind of negative space allow you to undergo exploration in cities. For example, uh, a very simple example are the phone booths. The phone booths in our city are actually quite neglected today because of, with all the mobile technology we have. So by trying to look at a phone booth very carefully or s designing some artwork to stage in the phone booth, you're already approaching something that, some space that is foreign to you. Um, for some, another s example could be the mailbox. Some of my artist friends decided to put um, a small amplifier player with speaker into the uh, mailbox in the morning, very early morning, before um, the post office collect their post in the afternoon. It's playing a song uh, all the time throughout the day inside the mailbox. What he thinks about is the idea of using something that is uh, almost being neglected in our city. Um, actually, uh, you don't have to uh, be scared by the amount of words in here. Uh, this is a topology I did about how people describe the spaces in our city that is foreign to us or that we find marginal or residual, uh, that is strange, that we want to explore. It doesn't have to be somewhere very remote. It can be just uh, near our home, somewhere that you never thought of visiting. Um, sometimes we call this queer space or heterotopia, uh, but with no matter all what, what, what is the name you like to use or what is the term you, you think that, is, that suits your interest most, uh, what I want to emphasize today is that everyone can start to uh, deviate from your um, usual pattern of navigation in the city. Um, from now on, I will explain, I'll give a few examples of uh, my practice. Um, uh, do you have any idea what, what kind of place is this? It's actually an elevated role in Pok Fu Lam. Um, most of the people who visited the uh, Queen Mary Hospital would have seen this uh, perhaps would have seen this, or people who uh, study in Hong Kong U when they walk back to the university from their residence, they will have seen this space. But this space is supposedly not for uh, any, any uh, pedestrian to walk into. It's, um, it's uh, very difficult to find the entrance to this space, this spectacular, very... Um, do you do find it look like a theater stage? I do find it look like a theater stage for some um, tragedies, for example, the Greek tragedies, which is a very good stage. But um, people walk by time to time. Actually, what you see there is a symmetry. And I find out this role uh, accidentally when I was uh, visiting the Queen Mary Hospital. So, um, but, but this place was not was almost never visited by anyone, although it has a kind of good uh, public space quality with its with very vacant space, very um, silent. But all we find there is uh, some um, dog shit there because only dog keeper would find out this place for, the, for, for running their dogs. But it's such a waste because it's a very good public space for everyone to go to. Um, I decided to make an artwork to show people that there's a possibility to enter this space. The red line you see there is are actually not a uh, Photoshop effect. It's actually, uh, I, I use some of the, uh, some strings, line on, uh, some ropes, uh, line on ropes, the cheapest material to uh, create this temporary sculpture uh, to indicate to people that um, this is actually a space for people to enter. That if you, you think, you think about it, you can find out the entrance. Um, this is actually where it is. About, uh, where it is. Um, uh, some other intervention into urban space that you never walk on to can be very playful or even childish. This is an, uh, it's another work I did in Manchester, uh, a city that is famous for not having too much sunshine. So one day when it's a sunny day in Manchester, I, I get to here, I get to this, uh, uh, below this flyover, which is very famous, called Mancunian Way. 
uh, highway surrounding the city of Manchester. I did some a kind of uh, pseudo performance here. Uh, the first video, thanks. I call this a quick study of lights and shadow in the city because uh, usually I walk along the line uh, of the, 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 the line that dem demarcates between the area with sunshine and with shadow as a kind of performance to show that, sh to, to tell people that the existence of this space. I actually use this video to promote the residual space here. Um, I, the first experience of encounter with uh, residual or marginal space is when I was in London. I, I asked someone after, uh, after visiting a university, I asked someone where can I find a toilet? And she points to me to this toilet, which is a, supposed to be a public toilet uh, that is underground. But um, soon I find out that it's actually already abandoned for more than five years. But as the, as the student uh, who tell me to go to here is a female, she never visited this uh, public toilet. And as she is a student from the university, she, ha she can use the toilet in the university and never knows that this public toilet is actually uh, closed for more than five years. So I find it amazing that even someone who walked by here every day she doesn't know that this is already an empty space. So it, the, what I call marginal or empty space or abundant land, uh, abundant land can be so close to us. So I did a very, very, again, a very childish and quick work by rearranging the pattern of the leaves there, who, which has left there for more than, more than five years, the accumulation of leaves. And I turned the whole space into an exhibition space by exhibi exhibiting some of the photographs of, of this place. And I find some of the historical photographs of that area and exhibited here to turn this closed public toilet into a temporary art gallery. Um, finally, the last example I would like to make is uh, more less individual, it's more systematic intervention into an, ab an abundant place. Uh, me and my friends, uh, call a group called Emptyscape, have uh, found have found a school in the northeastern New Territories, a place called Taku Lane and Peng Che. Um, we just happened to bump into this school. The entrance of this school is closed, and um, later on we find that this school is actually has been abandoned for like uh, eight years, and it's very popular for the TVB and for the uh, people making mu music videos to use it. But uh, later on, we soon, uh, with the collaboration with the community that there, we find that actually it's not a tabula rasa, which is, this word means, this term means that it's not some empty land to be added on. It has a rich layer of history. It's, it's actually a place deeply situated and embedded into the community's memory. So we start to organize some intervention is into this space to reenact or to recollect or to exhibit all the memory that embed that, that are em memories that are embedded into this space. First, firstly, we did a, a concert as a pioneer event to attract all the former the alumni and former students and people related to this school. We use some uh, f music forms such as. Um, Hacker music because it's it's full of hacker people there. Uh, most of the people are villagers who like uh, hacker culture. We did. Um, you see, you can see that the school has already turned into a forest. And later on, we find this uh, school song back, which is 
which is a song that has not been sung for more than eight years. But we find the, um, fi find the lyrics of the song and we, re we again uh, remix and make a modern version of this school song. Um, on the left is a very famous Hong Kong musician uh, from the band uh, Mini Noise. And on the right is a villager or an, an alumni in the, in the 70s of this school. So we collected a lot of uh, old school photos and did an exhibition in the school. And we have a very large scale art festival called uh, the Peng Che uh, Village School Art Festival. If you want to know more about this festival, you can visit uh, pengcheart.com. And um, this is the entrance of the uh, school after our intervention. Um, the two words in Chinese is called Peng Yuan, which is the name of the school. But actually, uh, the, yellow, yellow, the yellow object behind is uh, actually a fountain. But uh, we never know these two words and the fountain exist before we entered this place and decided to make a, the art festival because the grass ha has outgrown so much that we, can, we, we never see them. But uh, with collaboration with the community, we soon, they, they, they quickly tell us that, uh, I, I somehow remember there are two words there on the little hill. So we quickly uh, uh, did some intervention and this, this sculpture as, is actually uh, a skill learned from the farmers there to make um, uh, this, this sculpture, sculpture-like object is used for growing melons. So um, we have a lot of artists joining and a series of artwork and intervention into the here. I have no time to describe that them one by one, but you, you can find a lot of information about them in Google. Our festival was visited by 2,000 people from Hong Kong. And so today, my presentation is all about uh, encouraging you all to turn yourself upside down rather than turning the world upside down because um, every one of us can be an urban explorer as long as we uh, escape our usual patterns of walking and navigating in the city and look at the space that is foreign to us. So I would like to conclude with uh, Lou Reed, a musician that died recently. Uh, her, his most famous song, Walk on the Wild Side. As soon as you walk on the wild side, you are already an urban explorer. Uh, thank you. Please.